anyone in the listening audience who is a sincere seeker of the truth, grab your scriptures, a pencil, and a piece of paper. You are about to hear the most profound, dynamic, soul-story information ever to reach the shores of America. You are about to hear a true teacher, not a preacher. So come, let us step from the darkness into the true light with us Sayyid Al-Imam Isa Al-Hadi al نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الوالي الكريم وصلى الله على أنبياء أجمعين والمسيح والمحدي والمجدد لمن مرسلين Are we not the bearers of witness that nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it? And that he is alone and has no partners? And that all gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustainer of all the boundless universes. All gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the generous eternal friend. And send salutations of Allah on all of his prophets and his apostles and on the Messiah, the anointed one. And on the Mahdi, the guide. And on the Mujadda, the reformer. Which was all sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send greetings and we send peace throughout the boundless universe to all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. And now, the true light featuring as Sayyid Al Imam Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi. White people, in a way, are like um, a race of fallen angels. Yes, from the beginning of time. You read uh, the book of Revelation where you speak about the angels coming down, and in Genesis 6, the angels coming down, and even in Job where the angels went back up and Satan was with them. Lucifer, as he's known, the morning star by some people, the bright morning star, because Jesus is also called a morning star because they're all with angelic beings incarnate. Yes, the white race today is nothing but the devil incarnate in flesh. And Jesus pointed it out in the books of Revelations when he said, I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not. They are the synagogues of Satan. When they use the word synagogue in the scriptures, they use mejma, which means a congregation or gathering of Satan. He's saying that these people who are calling themselves Jews, because in his time there were many people, he said, would come in his name. Those who were calling themselves Israelites, saying they were of the tribe of Judah, but in reality they were Shaitan or Satan incarnate in the flesh. And the result of that, the manifestation in their physical body, is the curse of leprosy or leproma. Yes, the white race is the devil in the flesh, the falling angels who fell from grace that are in earth to torment us. And when Jesus came to earth, he came to warn us of that. He kept trying to tell us about them. He said, you are of your father, the devil. He kept pointing at the so-called Jews and said to them, you are of your father, the devil. The why you don't want to eat of me and drink of me is because you are of your father, the devil. You prefer to worship the devil. You follow? Even when Jesus healed people, he would tell them, now that you are healed or clean, don't sin again. The first man do that he healed. He went right to the Jews and told them that he was healed on the Sabbath day. The Jews said, who healed you? He said, I don't know the man's name. Correct? Then Jesus later on seen him. This is in the books of St. John. Then Jesus later on seen him in town and he asked Jesus his name. And as soon as Jesus told him, he went back and told the Jews, the man's name is Jesus. So then they set out to kill him because he healed on the Sabbath and made himself out to be the son of God, you see, so that's exactly what they do. They sit with you, talk to you, you will help them. You black people will work for them, assist them, and then they'll turn you over. to deliver you into the hands of their father, the devil. And the Quran backs it up over and over again. But the answer to your question is yes, the white race is the devil in the flesh. In the books of Genesis, they say he has a seed. He put this iniquity between a woman's seed and the serpent's seed. Nesala is the language they use in the scripture and Nestle means to conceive a seed, a human blood like a child is given birth by a mother and father that's the selection that they use in the scriptures okay? okay, at the same time that he's on earth in physical form are there invisible 
demon. Yes, Jesus also told us about legions of demons that get inside people. These people who call themselves Pentecostals are really people of right, the pentagram. The pentagram, now make note of this, Billy a goat, Graham, Pentecostal, pentagram, five-pointed star. Though they attributed to a certain event in Judaic history, they're really talking about Satanic worship and the Holy Spirit that they say these people are getting is not a Holy Spirit, but as Jesus called in Revelation, an unclean spirit. A Holy Spirit would never snatch an old woman out of a seat and throw her on the floor and have her foaming from the mouth and kicking. This is not what a Holy Spirit would do because Jesus called the Comforter a Holy Spirit. If they refer to their own dictionary under what the word comfort means, they'll find out that the people who they say are getting comforted in the gospel or Pentecostal churches are not acting like people at all to be comforted, but rather someone who's in a state of discomfort when they start kicking and foaming and falling on the floor and, and running off in gibberish. Jesus tried to warn us, the Messiah tried to warn us that the world is plagued with every unclean and foul bird, he says in Matthew 24 and in Revelation. Every unclean and foul bird. Yes, we have demons surging around and getting into us, possessing our people, and they think that they're saved. You follow that? And they're really possessed of unclean spirits. Yes, they, um, he works in more than one way. His biggest instrument is television, advertisement, commercials, music, the publicity. That is the devil's biggest trip because all of us in some way or other get caught on that. And it's very difficult to break away from it and be in tune with what's taking place in the society. So he knows he has us trapped. Go ahead. Um, are you Matizadik? Yes, I am. You are the angel Michael. Yes, I am. I spoke with an angel today. Um, so what all, of, all of you are angels who have fallen from grace. Remember, and we are only sent to testify unto you about the coming of the Messiah. And those who listen and accept him into their lives, they will be transformed back into an angelic state again. All of you are angels and all of you are sons of God who have fallen from grace. Our job is merely to prepare you, to dress you up like a bride and prepare you for a groom for the great wedding what they call Crystal City will descend out of heaven in New Jerusalem and you will enter back in in the presence of the Heavenly Father and therein cry no more, suffer no more, feel no more hunger. All the attributes that the devil has subject you to on earth will be removed from you when you enter back into the sacred city. All of you are angels. So when you say I'm speaking to an angel, so am I. This happened to John when tutoring him through the books of Revelations and he decided to fall and prostrate and was told, get up because I am your fellow servant. You understand? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, in Islam, is there a uh, marriage ceremony or are people just um, married if they are... Um, no, there's a very, strict, there's a very strict marriage ceremony in Islam, mm -hmm. in Nikah. The actual dowry has to be paid, there has to be contracts drawn up, there has to be family meetings and discussions for genetics. It gets very intense because in Islam, we don't marry just because a person is pretty. We marry by genetics as well. We make sure there's no disease in the father's blood. If my daughter is to marry, I want to make sure that there's no disease in the father's blood or his grandfather's blood so we inherit it. And this may sound bad, but you keep your bloodline pure by knowing who your children marry. And that's very, very, very important for you women is not to marry dumb men because they're cute. Right. You better start thinking about what you marry because what you marry will determine what the intellect of your children are. It is time for us to start breeding mentally. We have stopped breeding mentally, we started breeding physically. People say, he has curly hair or light eyes or light skin, so I'm gonna have a baby by him because I have light skin, curly hair kids. Those days are over. It is now time for you people to start breathing mentally because the higher the mental capacity, the easier it is for extraterrestrials to communicate with you. People on a low mental capacity, it's very difficult to penetrate that block, that ignorance. But people who are more sensitive spiritually because they were bred properly, it makes it easier when extraterrestrials are trying to communicate. Okay, um, in Islam, it's a woman, okay, you said that we were all angels fallen from grace. Okay, has an angel ever appeared in the form of a woman? No, an angel has never been summoned to come to earth. And the reason why I say that, because this is not the only planet with life on it in the boundless universe. There are female angelic beings who do go to other galaxies because there are other galaxies where female beings dominate. 
to keep the universe balanced. Man is a gender, not a god. He'd like to dream himself into godhood. He's merely a gender, not a god. And in the eyes of the Most High, there is no gender when you look on the planet Earth. He sees you all as his children. No female angelic being has been incarnate on the planet Earth. However, there are female angelic beings that do go to other galaxies. And those of you who perfect themselves and make the transition from a mortal into a supernatural being or back into an angelic state and will get the opportunity to travel into other galaxies, you will be amazed. Because once you make the transition, remember, the first thing you inherit at the day of resurrection is life eternal. The same thing that the devil promised you in the beginning, that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open and you shall be as God. He knew what he was talking about. He was deceiving us in one way because he was trying to make us violate the commandments of the Most High. But on the other hand, as an angel, he knew what he was talking about. You see, and the day will come that those people who recognize the violation of the commandments of the Almighty by partaking of that forbidden fruit, and reject the fruits of the devil and reject the things of the devil and take on the messiahship because messiahship or Christ is a nature that you all must succumb to there's great masters or beings called Elohim in the beginning of Genesis when they say in the beginning was the word they use the word Elohim Elohim is a Hebrew word which is Elo in a plural these Elohim are what they refer to as the we or the Lord of hosts the angelic beings they are overseeing, and they come into your plane at different periods of time to interfere with what man is doing to try to coerce him. Those of you who accept the teachings into themselves will be transformed back into, again, angelic beings, and you will witness the heavens. You'll see angelic beings, and you'll travel other galaxies. Those of you that can make that height. So just because a female was made from man, she, she is not infer inferior to man, is she? Um, but she is also from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes that very clear because he says that man was created from earth. And then he put man and woman over earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? So how could man be superior to woman if woman came from man when man came from something less than both of them? Earth. Right. So we both come from Allah. Both come from Allah equal. Equally. The, like the with right and the left eye of the face. With different um, purposes. Definitely different purposes. Oh yeah. Now don't misinterpret me. A man is greater than woman in that which he does, but so is a woman greater than man in that which she does. Right. Do you follow? Yes, sir. I'm going to um, let someone else speak. Thank you. Uh, listen, uh, if we're, uh, you said we're angels, and uh, we're also Nubian. So... We have fallen from grace too, right? I, I don't understand the question. You don't understand the question. No, I understand we are angels and I understand we are new. Yeah, what, you said what? Let me, maybe I'll do it this way. It says in Genesis that the Almighty created man of the dust of the ground and breathed into man the breath of life right. and man became a living soul. Right. The Nubian part of you is the physical composition, the flesh. Okay. And the angelic part of you is the spirit. The combination of the spirit and the flesh gives birth to the soul. I see. Okay. Another question. Uh, uh, I heard one of your tapes and it said on there that uh, you have sons of Allah and they don't know that they are sons of Allah. You are a son of Allah. Right. And you're having a hard time no, understanding, uh -huh. let me tell you what I mean. The light shineth in the darkness, yet the darkness comprehendeth it not. There was a man sent from Allah whose name was John. You see that? Yes. Now, how that happened? Take John the Baptist. When John the Baptist was questioned by the Jews, as they called him then, as to whether or not he was the Messiah, he said he wasn't. Correct? Right. They also asked him, was he that prophet? What did he say? He's not. Uh -huh. Then they asked him, was he Elijah? And what did he say? No. Later on, Jesus came along and told him, and told the disciples, that John the Baptist, Johanna, was indeed the return of Elijah. 
Now here is a man who the prophet called, John the Baptist, called a prophet, receiving revelations and inspiration from the Almighty. And when questioned of whether or not he was John the Baptist, he said no. By the time it gets to Matthew 17, 10 through 13, he finds out through Jesus that he is. So the answer is, you can have a divine spirit moving in you and you not know it because you don't tune your body in. This is why human beings get sick. Human beings get sick because their body becomes untuned just like an automobile. If your car is not properly tuned and the pistons and stuff are not functioning properly, the car will malfunction, correct? Right. Well, a human being also has a tuning process. He must stay in tune. Prayer, meditation are the things that keeps the human body in tune. He plugs into the source. If he does not keep himself in tune with the spiritual world, he becomes sick physically. You understand? Yeah. So that means that the spirit can be moving in man and man not be fully aware of it. All ye are sons of the Most High. Firstly, you all are angelic beings. When you break down the word angelic being, when you go to the English definition, to the Latin and the Greek, you come out with the word messenger. When you go to the Arabic word malaika, you come to one full of something. To be complete or full. Mah. You follow that? Yeah. A, a complete being. When you were in your spiritual state, you were a complete being. When you became a mortal and slipped from grace, you became a broken being, incomplete. And then the Almighty said, you must perfect yourself or correct yourself. In the language of the scripture, this is called salihin. Those who correct or fix themselves or work for perfection and righteousness. Yeah. You follow that? Yes. Yeah. I was also speaking on the, uh, the, the ones you, you call the vagabonds in one of your tapes. <laughs> yes. That you said you had to, um, that they belong to us. Correct. Right. Uh -huh. We people can be vagabonds. Right. We can be an angel possessed. You can be a devil with demons plaguing you. You right. follow? Yes. And thus you can be a good angel or a good person inspired to do even greater things. Right. Men who are called are angels whose light is increasing. Men who fall are angels whose lights are decreasing. Unfortunately for the world, the state it's in now, more angels' lights are decreasing, thus man is falling away from the light of the Most High on a more rapid pace than those beings who are evoluting towards perfection, increasing in light and getting nearer to the Most High. So you are vagabonds, you are thieves, and you do all kinds of treacherous things. But that doesn't mean that you're not an angel. It means you're an angel who fell from grace. Right. Don't make angels synonymous with good. Right. Don't make angels synonymous with Michelangelo's picture on the ceiling. This was a trick. The reason why it was painted on the ceiling is so when you look up, you get in a state of awe. Because they've always depicted heaven as up. Heaven is not up. Heaven is. Heaven is an expansion that is up down and around you. It's a state, not a place. Right. You understand? Yeah. So they've always given you the impression that angelic beings are not human beings. Where angelic beings are beings who have evoluted to such a state of perfection that they can, for instance, you can dress up like a baby. You won't be a baby. You can dress up like a baby and cry like a baby. As long as you have the intellect to be able to create the costume. Angelic beings are beings who've evoluted past the stage of you as a baby and know how to create the human costume by leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to incarnate or come back down as human beings to communicate with you. They are not the white man's interpretation of beings who are little fat white kids with wings like birds flying around <laughs> the heavens. Yeah. Angelic beings are intellect. They are beings who have perfected themselves from billions of different galaxies. And they look different depending on where they are, the different colors of their light, the different ways they vibrate. And when and if they're given leave by the Almighty to come down to earth, just like Jesus said in St. John, to come down to earth, he who came down can go back up. Not he who came out of the ground can go back up, but only he who came down can go back up. So there are people on earth whose name is not written in the book of life since the foundation of the world because they are not spirits who came down. They were spirits who were created on earth because it said the spirit of the Lord was upon the face of the water before man even got here. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Uh, what are angelic beings made up of? It depends. On the angelic beings. Most angelic beings are what you would refer to 
in earth terms as energy. And that energy can be positive, negative, or clashing. You follow? Yes. And the reason why they associate angels with light is because light is prompted by energy. Yes. Without some fusing, there will be no light of positive and negative energy charges. Yes. So it's all energy. One of the Muslim brothers told me that I have, or we all have, 180 degrees of negative uh, energy on our left side and 180 degrees of uh, positive energy on our right side. That's called Mishya, willpower. All that means is that the Almighty gave you balanced will. And being 360 is considered total, and that's only because of the ancient Judaic calendar, which only had 360 days. And they said that was a total year, so they took that and made it synonymous with total 360. Then you cut that in half, and if you cut man down and speak about his will to do right and his will to do wrong, it would be balanced at 180 degrees. This is just figures so that you can understand them on the earth plane. I don't understand. You don't understand? No. If I took a circle and drew it and cut it in half, if the whole circle is 360 degrees, each half would be half of that, which would be 180. When you look at man, and you look at man's nature, and let's take the match and make the match synonymous with man's nature. We light a match. A match is an object. Once we strike it, we hold a fire. The power to strike it is in the will of the individual who holds it. Do you have it? Yes. Once you strike it, what you do with it will determine whether it goes towards bad or good. You can either burn a house down with it, yeah. or you can warm a baby. That is your will. So you have an equal balance from the point that the match is struck to go either 180 degrees towards warming a baby or 180 degrees towards burning down and destroying things. That is your desire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave man the gift. That's how we are like him insofar as we're in his image and likeness because we have 180 degrees of nature. We can die one way or the other. On the other hand, angelic beings, once they split, one side of the 180 is referred to as seraphim, and the other side is referred to as cherubim. Together, they make up one body. Yes. You see that? Yes. Now on earth, y'all have the same thing happening. One side of y'all are choosing to go good, which is your race, and you are like the seraphim, and the other side it incarnated is choosing to go bad, that's the white race, and they are the cherubim. So the same thing that happened among us before the creation of your world is now happening among you on earth. And angelic beings will incarnate to try to warn you of the path in which you take. And the Quran mentions it because the angels confronted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in heaven and asked him, is this man, Adam, you create, is he going to cause mischief and bloodshed? Meaning, are they going to evolve to the same things that we did in Malakut in our realm? And Allah says, I know what you do not know. I have the knowledge of things you will never know. Yes, man was destined in order to, for him to pass the test that we failed. You follow? Yes. For him to pass the test, he must be confronted with the devil and do what? What did Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior to the world, say? What did he say you should do? He said when Satan tempted him... Stop living the ways of the devil. What did he say? What did Jesus say? He know. told Satan to do what? Not just you. I'm asking anybody in the room. What did Jesus tell the Satan to do? Get you hence. He said, get you hence. For it is written what? It shall serve the Lord thy God and him alone shall ye serve. Man's problem is he wants to serve two masters. He wants to serve Jesus and his father. He wants to serve money and success. And he wants to serve more than one master. And Jesus said, the Lord thy God is one God. You follow that? Yes, I do. So Satan's greatest trap is to seduce us into serving not just God and obeying his son, but worshiping God and worshiping his son. And though we think we're doing right, that's the ultimate wrong. In the devil's biggest trick is making evil look good. Right. So while we're worshiping Jesus, when we should be worshiping the Father who sent Jesus, yes. we think we're doing good and we're doing wrong. And the devil laughs. Another notch in the battle. If y'all think that y'all are not in a battle with the devil, you are. With every one of you people who sit in that room that say, I am about to be saved and born again. Born how? What did Nicodemus say? You mean go back into the womb of our mother? And Jesus looked at him like he was from 
another planet. Because he knew that this man was a leader amongst the so-called Jews and was asking such a dumb question. That should be real frightening to a man who knows that the enemy is against him. It's the same thing as when you watch television and you hear politicians say something that's utterly real stupid. And you drop your head and say, this guy's got the power to push the button. This is how Jesus felt when talking to Nicodemus. When Nicodemus said, you mean go back into the womb of my mother? And you know what he said in his mind? And these are the kind of people that want to kill me with this kind of logic. You know, Jesus said, he said, let me make it clear. No, I want to give you the answer so you know what to tell them. You must be reborn of the Spirit. You must receive a Holy Ghost. Which meant, looking at them, he saw them endowed with an unholy ghost. An unholy spirit. He said, you need a Holy Spirit. You need to be pure again. You need to look upwards. You need to be an ascending being again. You need to put yourself in tune with the Father who sent me. The one who sent me, he kept saying. But what do people want to do? It's so easy to grab on to the hem of Jesus and hold him and ignore the Father. Those people will go to hell. Because Jesus will tell them, I never knew you. They're going to say, but we cast out demons and heal and stuff in your name. And Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Because he never told nobody to do anything in his name. He said, our Father, who art in where? In heaven. Hallowed be what? My name. My name. Whose name? Jesus is or the Father? Allah. Then he said, thy what? Kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. So he told everybody that the heavenly Father is the one. And the last verse says, forever and ever. Amen. How long is forever and ever? Eternal. He said this is forever and ever. Amen. Not that it will change. Not that it will alter and you should worship me later and beseech me to help you. He said I of my own can do nothing. Because I am not greater than he who sent me. But people want to worship what they can hold. Because then they feel they can destroy it when they're tired of it. Yes. It's so much simpler to be able to hold God by hand. And then when he doesn't fit up to your standards, let his hand go and turn your back on him. We don't worship a God that any mortal can turn his back on. We worship a God that wherever you turn, there he is. Yes. You can't hide from him. It's simple to place him, pinpoint him, and label him. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. I brought that up to 180 degrees on each side because last Saturday when I woke up, I, uh, right before I opened my eyes, I was already up, but right before I opened my eyes, I, uh, on my right side, I had felt something touch me. And I know this sounds crazy, but uh, I was kind of curious as to what it was. And that's when I brought it to one of the uh, brothers. It's not What's crazy it? at all. Okay. It's just your guardian angel. It happens to Every couple of... person in that room has been assigned guardian angels yes. and recording angels. Yes. Angelic beings are the messengers of the Most High and they are recording all of your deeds yes. every second of the day. You cannot hide in the <laughs> middle of the desert under a rock painted over sand color because they're right. standing right next to you. Right. What the brothers say, you can't hide can't from hide. yourself. No right. matter where you go, <laughs> right there. there you are. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, I was on the beach with my... Uh, lady friend one night last summer and I uh, and I looked up at the North Star and uh, I saw it wasn't a plane because the plane doesn't move like you know like this you know and uh, like it dipped to the North Star it dipped it ran away and then it went right back to it and then jetted off I was uh, wondering if you could explain that <laughs> I can't explain your sighting but I can explain that uh -huh. there are many extraterrestrials visiting from yes. different galaxies but constantly they're always here they use clouds mostly as a cover they're here at all times yes but what does, go ahead what does the north star have to do with it the north star is a measuring point for your galaxy the same way your seamen when they didn't have maps would use the north right. star to find a direction right, right. extraterrestrials use the brightest star in your galaxy as a measuring point to know their north south east and west one here for logging understood and what about uh, the Bermuda Triangle? Because I, I want you to take the Bermuda Triangle is a magnetic force field that goes as deep down pyramid wise as it does up. Most of the extraterrestrials that come from this side of the black hole, their their machines. What do you mean the black uh, hole? So, well, let me finish one thought at a time. They're smarter than me. Let me move slow. Oh, okay, sorry. So their father or their ships, right, run yeah. off electricity, as you know, electrical 
energy. So they pull over the Bermuda Triangle and certain other permits in order to recharge themselves. American ships or earthborne craft who run off fuel, they're still in the Piscean air, the water air, they haven't transformed to the Aquarian age, which is the era of electrical uh, energies. They're still driving their ships off fuel and driving their cars off fuel, but they all will catch up soon enough. Uh -huh. These men drive these ships through these force fields and get snatched into other dimensions or crushed down into nothing. It's nothing but electrical like energy. Away. That's exactly what happened. Uh -huh. What is the next question? Uh, black hole? A black hole? What is a black hole? A black hole is a warp in space. A, what, a warp? A warp, like a bump in space. Like a bump. Uh -huh. Yeah, black holes uh, are created when two galaxies touch rims. If you had two round objects, and if the brother draws two round objects, two round circles, one above each other on the board, where the two rims touch, that point, you see that point? All right, see the point where the two circles touch? Yes. Yeah. If you move from that point outward, you'd have a black hole. The point that would travel in between those two. Now the problem is, if those galaxies are moving in different directions, you follow that? Yes. The currents change, so as a person travels in them, they could be transformed into another whole dimension, a fourth or fifth dimension. You follow? And you can get from one end to a black hole, which could take you a billion years of your time. You'd get so snatched up in time that you'd pass the speed of light, and you'd be transformed backwards in time, and you'd be able to travel a hundred thousand years in about a minute. Uh -huh. So extraterrestrials that come here, they're coming from long distances. The reason why they're able to intergalactically travel and not age is because like when Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus and they were coming because they were taken up in a cloud which is a ship they had traveled through the galaxies past the speed of light so when Moses arrived to Malachi he was the same age as when Joshua and him left him on Mount Horus and when he comes back through he'll come looking the same when people see, when they say, I've seen uh, Mary, Jesus' mother in the image, they always see her at the age in which she left. So it was like he never left. Well, because the point of death and acceptance, what do you gain? Say that again. The point of death and you have already bore testimony to the truth, what do you inherit? Eternal life. Right. You see that? And so each what? being that dies of old age will return to the age of perfection. We now have for your listening pleasure a complete set of the True Light tapes. There are now more than 24 hours of answers to the questions that have boggled the minds of humanity. For more than 20 years, the eminent master, Imam Isa, has answered all questions put before him. From skeptics to true believers, Jews, Christians, Muslims, all have increased their understanding of the words of the Most High by listening to the True Light on WWRL. Where can I get the True Light tapes? You can get the true light from your local Ansar representative that you see dressed in white. Or come down to the original tents of Kedar, 719 Bushwick Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. I still go to church and I've asked my minister many questions from the true light tapes that he cannot answer. I've listened to Jimmy Swaggart and other ministers, but I find that El Imam Isa is the only one who can explain the book of Revelations. I've been a Jehovah Witness since I was a child, and I thought I had a monopoly on the truth. But I've listened to the True Light tapes on the radio and have come to understand the truth about the life of Jesus. I listen to your broadcast every week, and as a result of the True Light tapes, I am now a follower of Imam Isa. Yes, the True Light tapes do make a difference. The True Light can change your life. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And now, let us return to our broadcast. But right before I went to sleep, I, uh, my whole body got numb. And uh, everything, you know, I tried to, you know, call for help. <laughs> I tried to call mom, but I couldn't even get the word out. And I couldn't move any part of my body. And, uh, and then everything got real dark. And then I heard, like, these children playing, you know. And then uh, it stopped, and I saw this big, this uh, real bright yellow light. 
And then uh, I didn't really want to go back to sleep after that. <laughs> like John, like, the, John. like John of the book of Revelations, the voices you heard was the voices of the angels in heaven. Like he said, I heard the voices coming out of the throne and a great light. That's the mothership. You just happen to be out of your body for a split second. This can happen. Now you have to learn to perfect it for proper traveling because you can get out and get trapped outside your body by accident. Right. That's why I was kind of, I thought, you know, I was, it was my time to go. And I was like, what now? <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, this is pretty weak. I couldn't even, you know, you have a goodbye. system. You have a system <laughs> created in you that protects you. It produces a hormone called adrenaline. Right. And this adrenaline has the power to re-personify you. When man gets scared, his brain triggers a certain thing and a hormone releases a thing in your body called adrenaline. Right. This adrenaline personifies mortals. It will bring you back out of comas, it will chase dogs from you. It can give you the power to lift a car. This is a, a divine essence that the Almighty has placed in each man. Don't feel strange about strange things because, no, because we're in strange times. Right. Understood. And the devil is performing all types of signs and wonders alone. He has his own things. He's doing making fire come down out of the sky and different things that back in John's time would have been unbelievable to see planes flying and shooting beams of fire from the sky. <laughs> you follow? So you're living in a, such a strange world. It's going to get stranger because everything the devil lets you see, believe, he's sixfold deeper. You understand? Yes. Everything he lets y'all see on television, he got six degrees deeper than what you're seeing. You mean six degrees deeper? If he shows you a certain type of ship, he has six ships that are better, or six degrees deeper. Right. Also, uh, so you're saying not to be afraid if it happens again, because I didn't really want it to happen because I, you know, uh, I started to, I was starting to um, accept it, you know, every time it would happen, and uh, but after a while I tried not to, I tried to fight it, in other words. Regardless of what I tell you, when that moment comes, you stand alone. I can tell you don't be afraid, lean into it, go towards it. Mm -hmm. Put your spirit into it, but when that moment comes, like I said, there's a special hormone that triggers in your brain that tells you should you go or not. I can tell you don't be scared. Yeah. It's easy. Don't be scared. Yeah, okay, yeah. now. But when it happens, after you'll a while decide. I wasn't though. I tell you, after a while I got used to it, and it was like you know, it was all right. But then it's all right. That's because something in your aura received this energy and said that it's safe. The same way you look at a person, if they're not frowning, you figure you can walk up to them. Right. Well, the spirit does the same thing. It gets around people. Your mother many times told you, I don't like that boy. I don't know much about him. Yeah, him. I don't want him in my house. Yeah. There's something about him I don't like. That's right. called mother's <laughs> intuition. You have this inside of you where you can look at people and you can evaluate their goodness or badness. The same thing happens spiritually. People get around you and they have a negative aura. You know it. A lot of human beings have a dog and they'll tell you that the dog won't bite you. Don't worry, got my teeth. dog won't bite you. <laughs> you look at the teeth. dog, the dog looks at you like, yes, I will. I won't bite her because I won't bite the hand that Feed feeds me, yeah. but I will bite you because you, you are <laughs> what she feeds me. Also, um, I guess on the same subject, I saw, you know, like, like sometimes I'll see shadows and whatnot in the form of <laughs> men. Sometimes, this, ha this hasn't happened for like um, a couple of years, but like around 19, uh, around 1980, uh, I think it was, or 81, you know, I, I saw this shadow of a man a couple of times, and I thought it was my buddy that was, you know, my roommate up in school. And then after that, I would see, like, little shadows moving across the floor in the air, <laughs> you know. Your problem... I'm not your, making your, any of this no, up, you know, I, I'm not... You, know, I'm you don't have to say that to me. See, I'm not that type of person. You don't have to say that to me. Because uh -huh. I've been having to tell people, I'm not making this up for years, so yeah, I can I understand you, your feelings. You. <laughs> all right, the thing is, your eyes are open. That's all. Not those two eyes, but when Jesus said, let your eyes become one... That one eye, your third eye is open. You're looking from this world right into the next world simultaneously. So you might see anything. You've got to learn, I'm serious, you've got to learn to discipline yourself. You've got to cut them bad habits. Yes. You understand? Yes. You've got to learn to discipline yourself. You've got to change your diet. You've got to learn to fast and pray. You've got to read your scriptures. Because you're connected to both worlds. And when the angelic beings can no longer make contact with you, they will remove themselves from your presence and you'll get plagued by demons. By demons? Yes, many times you meet a person, you say, this brother's very spiritual, and he has a lot of beautiful things to say, but you know he has these bad habits, yeah. and next thing you know, you see him on 42nd Street. <laughs> well, I'm serious, it's not yeah, funny, it's very yeah. serious. You see him as a bag man, because the angelic beings realized they couldn't reach him, so they stepped away, and the demons attacked him, and took his body, and sent him crazy. And this is happening to our people all the time. 
And it's very difficult once the demon gets a hold of you inward and outwardly for anybody to exercise him away from you. Is that why sometimes like, like, it, like when it's real cold out my forehead it get real hot? <laughs> Can you explain yeah, that Yeah, exactly. So will your ears. And oftentimes people whose bodies stay at a very high temperature, y'all are healers. Yeah, that means there's an abundance of electrical current running through your body. You have the power to put on hands and heal. I was but you've got to learn to channel, channel it. Yeah. Because the devil or the demons want people like you better than they want a person with cold hands. They want people that have that power. That's just genetics. Just It's in you genetically, that's all. So there's nothing to fear. The yeah. fear is that if you don't discipline yourself. Right. Now you've got to be careful because when a white person looks at you, don't you notice they look at you differently than the way they look at anybody yeah. else? Look like they want to kill the brother. I don't want to send you crazy now, because I can mess around and send no, you crazy by saying too many things that are right. Yeah, but you know. understand, he knows the angelic beings who are ascending from the angelic beings who are descending. And he can feel it, and he humiliates you. Let me tell this to the mothers in there. He will humiliate your son in school and keep telling you that your son is a bad kid, a bad kid, a bad kid, because he sees in your son righteousness. And your son cannot comply to the laws of Caesar because he's been groomed to comply to the laws of the Most High spiritually. You send him to the public school and in that school those teachers see him, look in his eyes and see that that's an angel and start torturing him and it saying he's me. stupid. Not because, <laughs> because a child does not learn how to read and write the devil's language, it doesn't mean he's stupid. Yeah. It means that he was smart enough not to let it assimilate itself in him. Yeah. He could be being protected by beings waiting for the truth. Don't always assume your children are dumb because they don't just to the white man's society. Right. The devil can look at the righteous, see them, and torment them. He sets out to torment them. You understand? He makes yeah. life difficult for them at their jobs, in their school, when you go shopping. But Certain yeah. Negroes walk in the store, the white man pays them no attention. Soon as you walk in the store, yeah. can I help you? Yep. And you look at yourself and say, I don't look like a criminal no more than anybody else. But the devil senses something in you, and he wants you. The question that I'm going to ask you, right, um, Revelation chapter 21, verse 2, it speaks about the tabernacle, right, and relating that the tabernacle is within man. Now, is that relating to this community right here? And, and if it is... Where? In Revelation chapter 21, 21, verse 2. Where does it say that it's in man? It says, um, behold... The tabernacle of Allah is with man. Men. Verse 3. That's right. More than, more than one. That's right. It's with them. That's right. So but I'm listen to what it says. Uh, and number, see, what you did is you jumped to three. If you read number two and one, you'll see that it comes down out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for the wedding. So it's something that's going to come out of the heaven. It's a place. And if you read all the 21, it actually goes into describing its size and the doors in it. And the stones that activate it, the amber colored lights, it's a ship. They're talking about a large ship. I think I gave a class on last week all about this section. So oh. it's not a spiritual incarnation into people. It's an actual place. It has walls and a floor and a foundation. And the terminology in the language that it's in, you know, in the original language, other than English, mm. it's talking about a place, not a mental thing. Right, right. Um, next, I want to ask you, right? They speak about um, the seven angels. It's, it was hard for me to understand. That's why I have to okay. bring it forth to you. Well, there's different kind of angels in here. There's angels of plagues in the revelations. Mm -hmm. They have seven angels with seven vows. Then they have the seven spirits which are before the throne. And those are the seven archangels who are under Mikhail. You follow what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So the Bible, especially the book of Revelation, speaks of seven angels seven different times. And they're not always the same angels. So what they can be, they distinguish that, you know. Oh yeah, there's millions and millions of angels. Angels are beings like you are. And they multiply the way you multiply. Mm. They are beings. They marry. They, there's gender. There's males and females amongst them. You know, they do everything you do. In Holy Quran chapter 37, verse 150, will tell you that angels are females. You said chapter 37? Verse 150. 150, right? You don't have it? Could somebody read it for him? Yeah. Or did we create the angels female while they were witnesses? You see? It says Allah did not create the female angels while men were looking on. See, man didn't see that. So man is under the presence of all angels are men. But the Quran tells us that there's female angels. Um, so they reproduce. Like you, the angels are people. They're beings. 
they just existed before the creation of your world and have evoluted further than you are now. You're evoluting towards that anyway. You're becoming more sophisticated. You're doing more things spiritual than you all do physical anyway. So you're on that evolutionary scale or that evolutionary elevator towards the angelic state also. Go ahead. Okay. There is supposed to be no giving and, um, and taking of marriage in heaven. And then you did mention something about they are being female spirits and they do marry with the males. First of all, when they speak of no giving and taking of marriage in heaven, they're talking about after Yom and Okay? After, after the end of the world. As you know it, when in Revelation they say they're going to usher in a new heaven and a new earth. So the laws pertaining to heaven and earth after Yom and Akhri is going to be different than the way they do now. Because scripture mentions the fact that angels are females, they use the gender malaikat. They point it out. All right? Mm -hmm. And that Iblis himself was a young jinn at one point. Okay? There stands to reason if there are male angels like Jibrael, Mikael, female angels, and himself, Azazila, was once a child, what does that imply to you and I? That they do have involvement. Angelic beings, I'm trying to establish in your mind that angelic beings, the way the Christians have given it to you is wrong. They've given you this ghost-like feature, this little fat white baby with wings or some blonde or blue-eyed creature with rings who's transparent or exmoplasma. Yet throughout the studies of the Bible, as well as the Torah, the scriptures of the prophets, the Quran, we hear mention of angels personifying in human form. Just like when the angel Jibrail came to Muhammad, he came to him as a man. When Jibrail came to Miriam, he came to her as a man. When Mikael came to Daniel, he came to him as a man. So angels personify in human form. You follow? Angelic beings in their realm, because they have their realm the way you have your realm. This realm you're in is referred to as Nasut. It gets its root from the word Nas, again, or Ans, forgetful. It's the root of what you are, people. The angelic world is called Malakut. It gets its root from the same word as angel, Malaika, or to be filled or complete. That is another realm. In the realm in which we dwell, we are as physical as you are in your realm. You understand? Mm -hmm. We are just as physical. It's like pouring water in water. Now, on the physical plane, the difference between us and you is because we are thousands and millions of years more mature than you, we know how to personify into the physical form by the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You all are evoluting towards that. Chances are with the help of Satan you'll never get there, but you all are going towards that stage where you all become more mental than physical. From Malakut, we have the power to come back and be physical. You all have come down from where we came. This is why throughout the book of St. John, Jesus keeps saying to these people, you don't know where I really came from and you don't know where I'm really going. And they said, well, we know your mother and father. <laughs> he said, that's because you don't understand what I am saying. I came down from heaven and I am going back there. That's what he kept trying to tell them. Because he was trying to tell them that he was an extraterrestrial. That when he referred to himself, again I repeat, as a son of man, or Ibn and San, that really translate not son of man, not son of a Rajul or a Bashar, that son of an insan, of a human being. Son of man translates the son of a human being. Now, if Jesus told him, I am not of this world and my things are not of this world, yet I'm the son of a human being, what part of his nature would identify with which person that we know as a human being? And that would, of course, turn out to be his physical body, correct? which he separated when he said, my spirit is willing and my flesh is weak. And that physical body came through Mary, which everybody, be Christian, Jew, or Muslim, recognized. And she was Mary, his mother, from the family of Imran, was what? A human being. So when Jesus said he is a son of man, he was referring to his physical being. And when he referred to himself as Ibn Allah, as a son of Allah, he could never have referred to himself as Walid Allah, to be conceived or begotten by Allah. But he said, Ibn Allah, he was referring to the fact that his angelic nature, which was the angel, Jibrail, came down from heaven. You follow? And when Jibrail came to Miriam, he came to her as a man and endowed her with the Holy Ghost. Jesus in St. John's blew the Holy Ghost on his disciples. So it is possible for one person to convey the Holy Ghost on to another person. So that where, when Jibrail, who came as a person, 
came to Mary, he conveyed the spirit onto Mary. The same way you would when you convey a spirit onto your child. And Jesus told him in St. John's again, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. When you see me, you see the Father. Christians have a tendency to stop right there instead of going on to the next two verses. And then he turns to his congregation and says, and I am in you and you are in me. When they see you, they see me. So he was trying to say that when you pick up something from a person, their thoughts, their feelings, their mind, their doctrine, their teachings, and you start to use those teachings because he kept saying, keep my words and keep the commandments keep my practices, then you become a representative of that person the way any Muslim who follows the Sunnah of Muhammad becomes a Sunni Muslim, as they say. You see how they do it? That's another way of Muhammad saying, I am in you and you are in me. Once you take in my way and start acting like me and following my tariq, then I am in you and you are in me. So therefore we have two personalities here, the human being quality and the angelic being in Jesus, angelic being, being the angel Gabriel who comes as a man. So angelic beings in the realm from which we come, we do indulge in what you refer to as sex. We reproduce the same way you do. You're a younger stage of evolution. That's all. Man has got to start to look at himself for what he really is and not what these silly preachers or pastors are passing on to you. You understand? Man is a baby angel. You were at one time a pure angel and you out of desire fell from grace. Now you're in earth and you must evolute back to perfection. They call it salihin or salihat in the Quran. To perfect, to fix yourself. You understand? So angels do come together and have sex in their realm. Not always for the same reason that they do in the planet earth because we were not under the mystical name of the beast, the harlot, who teaches women to remove their veils and teaches men to remove their outer garments so that they create a world of seduction and take people's attention off the, old, the path of Allah and obedience to him. This is the trick of the devil, but that's his job. And our next defense is recognizing his job. Recognizing when we look at television how everything is naked and stripped down. Recognize how he's perverting our minds and recognize what he's doing. Once we do that, we got step one mastered. Y'all are on the path again towards becoming angels. Remember that. And angelic beings are nothing but beings like you who are millions of years more advanced in intellect and nearer, therewith, nearer to the Creator. You understand? Thank you. You've been listening to The True Light, sponsored by the Newman Islamic Hebrew Mission and the original tents of Kidar, 719 Bushwick Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, where you can come and purchase The True Light tapes and the latest editions of The Panthers of Peace as authored by as Sayyid Al-Imam Isa Al-Hadi Al-Mahdi. These informative pamphlets cover such topics as the science of healing, what and where is hell, you must be born again, and where is the tabernacle of the Most High. Available for your spiritual enrichment are Sufi oils and incense. We also have available a beautiful prayer rug designed by As-Sayyid Al-Imam Isa Al-Hadi Al-Mahdi. Be sure to come to the Hall of Knowledge at 548 High Street, Brooklyn, to see as well as hear the renowned master teacher who will change your life. اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم صدق الله العظيم That was the first five verses of Surat Al-Alaq. Originally revealed to the Prophet Muhammad as the first chapter, it is today recorded as the 96th. As translated by As-Sayyid Al-Imam Isa Al-Hadi Al-Mahdi, it reads as follows. O seal of the prophets of Allah, by the supreme sovereignty of your sustainer and creator, you are being ordered to read by beginning with the name of your illustrious sustainer, who is the creator of all things. He, Allah, created all human beings of a cell separating. 
So read, because your sustainer is most generous. He uses the quill to teach. He, Allah, taught human beings what they would have never known. ربنا أكمل لنا نورنا وأكفر لنا إنك على كل شيء قدير. This is from the 66th surah of the Holy Quran, the eighth verse, and reads: O oh, sustainer, complete for us our light, and forgive us, for surely you have the power over all things. 